afternoon. My name is Tim Dill. And I'm Anthony Martori. And we're Kim Our Rescue. Our story begins in 2007 when Marty's dog Moxie got out of her house and ended up in the shelter. After going up and down the streets of LA and going up and down the aisles of the shelter, we finally found her locked in this back room about to be euthanized the next day. She was deaf, so they figured that she was defective. Nobody wanted to adopt her, so she was slated for euthanasia. So Marty started volunteering in shelters and uh, started networking dogs and getting them adopted through friends, family, coworkers. So we decided to take it to the next level and started getting more dogs adopted. And then, fast forward to today, we saved close to 600 lives. We're 100% volunteer based and 100% foster based. We provide the dogs and the beds and all the medicine and the fosters just provide the love and the shelter. Some of the facts that we found through the American Pet Association is that six to eight million dogs are placed in shelters every year in the United States. And only 50% of them ever get out of the shelters. Another fact that we found was 190,000 dogs are placed in shelters over the past three years in Los Angeles County alone, and only 37% of those dogs ever find homes. That's 120,000 dogs. Each year, California taxpayers pay $250 million to the shelter and euthanize the dogs and cats. The problem is basically down to the human factor. The pet overpopulation in Los Angeles is causing overcrowding in the local shelters, which results in the high amounts of euthanasia. A lot of this, a lot of this is because people aren't aware that they should stay and do their dogs. There's a lack of education on good pet guardianship, good pet wellness and nutrition, what to feed your dogs, what's the good thing to feed them and keep them safe. The amount of surrender pets is attributed to the guardian's lack of knowledge on how to identify, address, and correct the pet behavioral issues. Our solution is Kimar Rescue University. Kimar Rescue University will be putting on classes for behavioral, which would be sit, stay, speak, all the basic commands. Guardianship training, how to keep your dog safe, how to um, make sure that your dog gets enough exercise, mental stimulation, and health and wellness, what to feed your dog, what not to feed your dog, like grapes, celery, chocolate, that kind of stuff. Our staffing model would be Kenmar Rescue University with vet, independent traders and professionals and connect them with our clients, which would be our adopters and future adopters. So let's take a look at what makes Kenmar Rescue University different from our competition. We realize that successful dog training is twofold, not just for dogs, not just for their pet parents, but rather both. Some of our direct competitors are independent trainers who do contract negotiations with their clients and have a very specific niche of who they can address. Kenmar Rescue University is going to have a wide, wide variety of these independent trainers contracted, contracted under our program, so we can, we can address all, all issues for dogs, from behavioral issues to guardianship issues and health and wellness issues. Also, we've noticed that big box pet stores such as Petco and PetSmart run very well, but they're standardized and not personalized. By having in-home and in-home private, private sessions and larger group sessions, we'll be able to personalize our courses so everybody can have value in what, what we can provide. In addition, we are the only dog rescue in Los Angeles that can serve the Hispanic community and the Hispanic consumer in language, which is a huge large and just growing market that is untapped and ready for Kmart Rescue University. We already have a very strong network with over 3,000 subscribers to our newsletter and 2,000 followers on Facebook. We have active and loyal customers who are ready to buy into Kmart Rescue University. In addition, in the Los Angeles area, we have strong partnerships with vets, groomers, and current trainers who we have already contacted and who are willing to begin the process. However, Kmart Rescue University pride itself on, on engaging the community, not just our customers. Just this month, we hosted a doggy art, art show for everyone to attend, and in July, we're gonna be having a wine tasting event. So all the dog lovers of LA can come together and enjoy with Kenmar University. 
Over the next three years, we are projecting stable profit growth. Our price point is $25 to $40, depending on the, the types of classes that people want, in-home or, or public group classes. And this is why we have stable growth for the next three years. For our primary research, we have realized that since there's such a difference in what people want based on in-home and group, and group classes, we have a very specific market of people that can't afford some of the more expensive standardized courses, such as Petco and PetSmart. So where is this demand coming from? On a yearly basis, there's a 2% increase of families that are now bringing in dogs into their home. And people want that new part of the family that they couldn't have otherwise without a child. It's not just a pet anymore, it's a part of the family. And as people get busier and busier, they can't incorporate ways to find out what's going wrong with their dog at home. They're very busy with work, they're very busy with their children, and they need to find ways of how can we address the problems we're having with our dog, whether they're new owners or experienced owners. And that's what Caremont Rescue has really prides itself on providing. Providing that gap to wherever you are with your dog, whatever problems you may be having, we can address those. We are projecting breaking even after only one month. Our venture is a low risk expansion of the services that we already provide for our customer. And we are confident after one month we'll be able to have enough revenue to, to pay off of our substantial startup costs, such as marketing, graphic and website design, and some staffing costs. So what's in it for you? We hope to one day reach your neighborhood. And that pesky dog that's barking at 1 o'clock in the morning when you're trying to sleep now has a much more informed family. With Kenmar Rescue University <laughs> sanctioned courses and the understanding of how to properly take care of their dog. What's this going to relate to? High pet retention. Less pets are going to be going to shelters or on the streets and in, and in homes, finding the forever families. This means less taxpayer money is going to be going to shelters and some more important things, such as education or to special needs children who can't find that companion at school, but can find that their companion with their best friend at home, their dog. We would like to request a $25,000 investment that will help us primarily achieve this goal for paying off our, um, our staffing costs. For the first year, we're going to be operating on contract-to-contract -contract negotiation for our Kemar Rescue University certified trainers. And then as we expand to year two and year three, we're going to be going salary basis. Right now, we stand as Camar Rescue University. Excuse me, we stand as Camar Rescue. We help abandoned dogs survive. Camar Rescue University will take us to the next level. Not only will these deserving do dogs survive, they will thrive. By creating an educational platform, of which our, our clients understand, of what we can do as a community to bring together these deserving dogs and improve, improve our own lives. We serve to enrich, we strive to enrich the, the dogs, our partners, their owners, and the entire community. That is our promise, and you can be sure our bite is as strong as our bark. <laughs> Take care of, 
of the dog. Okay. So, um, it's about that. Marty, she does a lot of matchmaking consulting work right now. I'm finding that perfect dog for a lot of our customers who come to Kenmar Rescue and are looking for a dog for the family. So we're basically expanding this to be a to be a venture that could be more sustainable, to more monetize that that we that we that we're do for free for our customers. Right now and we're getting calls at two o'clock in the morning, my dog chewed my shoes up, they're barking, what do I do? And we just want to make sure that the dog stays in the home that we found for them, that they they don't get returned or even works back to the shelter. So how so how does the pricing how does the pricing model work? How do you guys plan to make? We put on classes. Just the classes. With classes and trainings. For example, CPR classes. You would think that there are CPR classes for dogs, but there are. And uh, then we have the different trainers that we have contacted throughout the years that are willing to help our adopters. Right now, we're hooking up those adopters with the trainers if there's a problem. So <clears throat> now we're just going to be more formalized and say, okay, every month we're going to have a training on. The, the basic training six day. Next month we might have a more um, specialized training on um, agility or even uh, anxiety issues for just a more in depth type of training. So would it be open to the public or? Would oh, it be open to the public or yeah. just people who have the okay, so open At first it's going to be through our adopters, word of mouth, and our marketing campaigns that we're, we plan on using through you know, Facebook, Twitter. And, and how did you, you had verbally mentioned the price, the, the price point. To me, it seems low, you know, but, but I'm just wondering how you guys came, came up with it. Yeah. Um, so basically how we found the pricing was we looked at our competitors, see what they were charging, and because we are trying to, this is an issue that we're trying to solve, we surveyed all of our, um, you know, newsletter followers and we found that 75% of our clients have not gotten the dogs trained. And that's what the issue is. The dogs aren't trained, the owners aren't trained. So we're trying to eliminate that and so we're pricing our classes and our services under market just by a little bit just so we can attract those customers because right now we found that the main reason why they haven't gotten the dogs trained is because of that price. So is it pricing or is it are you sure it's are you sure it's the price and it's not a time constraint? Yeah. So we've we surveyed our we surveyed over seventy uh, dog owners and we found that the number one reason for that is, is the cost. Of the dog. Mm -hmm. And also um, for the since we do operate mainly like the Los Angeles area, so it's more affluent area. So the people who can um, who want to take that, you know, they'd rather have more leisure than cost savings, then that's why we offer in-home training that would cost a little bit more, but the trainer will come to your home and spend the hour or two with your dog so that you can kind of get on with your life as well, just feel a little bit more from it. So a uh, uh, couple quick, quick comments, because uh, obviously it's a big market. It's, it's a, a huge problem. I've, I've heard kind of the, uh, I, I uh, own a rescue dog, big supporter, and I spent a lot of time in shelters, and it's really heartbreaking. Uh, I don't know you, you want to have like hundreds of dogs, but yeah. Yeah. and that would be easy to do. Um, my my memory is that the boom, boomerang rescues is like 50 percent, like it's a super high kind of return rate, right? Uh, at least at a shelter. But I think rescues do, and Pasadena specifically, they, they do more kind of filtering and screening before they'll let you. And, and that, and that, my understanding is that that's has a real impact on the boomerang percentage. But but the normal like the LA shelters. Are uh, what I've heard are really startling. So, so let me just say, I think that is a, a data point in, our, in support of coming in and, and really helping the owners, the new owners, uh, do better and get more, really build a stronger relationship. And so I think that's all really good. Um, my, my, the, the break even in one month thing, um, yeah, I know it's just, it, you gotta like explore that a little bit when I, when I hear things like that. Uh, and so just looking at your, your first month here, um, I wonder what, in your current model, how many rescues are you doing per month, per week, or whatever, in, in the current business? About four to six. Four, four to six, which is awesome. Thank you. 
Well, the week is pretty good. So, so in your first month, it is in, in your first month here, and, and even the bigger rescues. I can't remember they, what they are in LA, but there's some bigger that have relationships with pet stores and stuff. Right. Um, your first month, you're you're talking about 88 customers by my uh, and so if 75 percent of your current rescue families, you know that seems like your opportunity, your kind of immediate marketing access is to three of these 88. So how are you going to get to the other? I mean, I know you kind of had that stuff up there online marketing and social stuff, but, but to go from three to 88 in 30 days, I, I would suggest that you really think about is that realistic? And I ask you because I, I, one of my companies that I, I operate a website called greatvets.com, uh, coincidentally, uh, and, and I'll tell you that marketing online, if you have to pay to acquire pet owners, is really expensive because you're competing with people who are selling things with much higher profit, profit margins than you get. The drugs and you know, those kinds of things. And so, and and even products where it's at least it's a fifty percent margin. But you know you're you're competing with folks who can afford to spend twenty or thirty dollars to find a new pet owner. So how how did my question is simple? Is how do you find those other eighty five pet owners in the first month? Um, well, first we are going to target directly from word of mouth to all of our you know all of our supporters, past and present adopters. But also this is going to be just a wide marketing campaign to try to get anybody in the community involved. And also our first partnership with the with the pet trainers, is that our negotiation is going to be maybe a 50-50 profit split, which is a lot, is, which is something that other trainers do where they go to a store and they say, you know, provide me the space and then I'll split the profits with you. So that's kind of the model that we're going off of. So there's also incentive for the trainers to get the word of mouth out and having multiple classes a month, that's how we're going to try to get, you know, Maybe if we have three classes a month, 20 dog owners, plus individual private lessons, that's how we're going to try to um, just push out. Really. <coughs> Do the trainers need you? Because aren't they already trying to market their own services? Will they keep 100% of them? What we're doing is we're hooking them up with the clientele that's going to be a, a permanent customer. I thought I heard you saying that you're, you're trying to share their clientele, at least initially. Okay. It goes both ways. Okay. Because you've got the 3,000 right. that remain on this. Right now, we're not monetizing that referral yeah. at all. And we're also not addressing uh, Hispanic-speaking adopters. There's nothing out there um, in, in language. So, and I'm fluent. So having a class um, to be able to address that community is very new. Um, and I, I see our biggest opportunities in that immediately, but also in other um, cultures as well, where <coughs> pet ownership is not the same in their home country as it is per se. Or you're not allowed to have a job. Or you're not allowed to have a job. You're not allowed to live in an apartment, which we think 
is really quite ridiculous. We do, we do a very easy two-step process. We apply online, and then we come to your house. And if everything is okay after that 45-minute uh, meet and greet, you're okay with it, we're okay with it, it's, it's that support network that we are now trying to add on to, that invisible support network. I have a dog now that. And we're the now what? We want to do. And then you do the you know, sister organizations that probably come on board with if we had a structure. University, like we were talking about, we have a, a sister organization called Karma Rescue. We have we have a sister organization named Karma Rescue. This just makes me more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they do pit bulls. So we would have to have some logistics because we do small dogs mostly. But yes, we do have a lot of organizations that we've talked to over the over the, over the six years, seven years that we've been around, and. I believe they would be very receptive to this type of model. I guess I'm, I guess I'm, I'm hearing everybody kind of try to get the the, the marketing you know, logistics with you, and it sounds really hard. You know, it sounds like this isn't an easy thing to do at all. So I'm trying to figure out how, and I guess that's the question. Is like it sounds really attractive. I'm a dog owner. My dog was he didn't even make the shelter. He followed. A coworker into the bank, and you know she brought back to work, and he you always know, my dog. You know, but I mean, but literally, it's, it's like, how do they find you? You know, what? Because I, I, I lived in LA all my life. I'm like, where have you worked, you guys? Then I mean, it just sounds like there's such an opportunity, but it sounds like to me the the numbers, or even to get like the marketing and the collaboration clear, would be able to help. I understand how people would get on you. Is that? We is are that really true? relying on our Facebook, the thousands of people that we have on Facebook, the thousands of people that we have on Twitter, and that word of mouth that exponentially get the word out for us. Um, it has worked out with a lot of our fundraising events, and we've been really successful in getting the word out. Um, Marty's got a marketing background, I've got a little bit of marketing background too, so it, it, it's going to be a, a marketing. And just this year, we're starting to do um, called cross pollination with other organizations. For example, the Doggy Wonderland Art Show. We tapped into a, a whole segment of people that didn't know anything about this, and our people didn't know about them. So, in doing these fundraisers, it's more like fur ra fur raisers, they call them, because it's raising the awareness of you know cross pollination in the community. Yeah, and because of that, now we have vets calling us and saying. Hey, we have a Spanish-speaking vet. We'd like to come on board um, with whatever you're doing. Just on the marketing side, we have we've had five rescues from lower Dalmatians. Wild dogs. But <laughs> what we found out is it's, it's always better to have two dogs at a time, especially if somebody's not there. And I'm just wondering if part of the marketing would be could you have your first dog to calm down with this too? That's yeah. always our That's marketing. Always <laughs> <laughs>